All right, everybody, welcome to uh, my talk on Webform. Uh, Webform is the module for making surveys in Drupal, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, I put the slides up for this presentation uh, at quicksketch.org. It's just the top post, so you should be able to find it pretty easily. Uh, and follow me on Twitter. Uh, my handle is quicksketch. Uh, a little bit about myself. Uh, I work for Lullabot. Uh, my name is Nathan Haug. Uh, I'm Quick Sketch on Drupal.org also. Uh, and I'm the author of a lot of popular modules for Drupal, including uh, flag, file field, image field, insert, and of course web form that we're going to be talking about today. Uh, in Drupal 7, I'm also responsible for the image handling in Drupal 7, um, the image styles and image fields and all of that. Uh, and I also uh, co-wrote uh, the O'Reilly book uh, using Drupal. So let's talk about Webform. Uh, Webform, like I said, it's, it's the tool for making surveys in Drupal. There are a couple other smaller modules out there that are, are proposing some other uh, approaches to it, but Webform by far is the most popular and the most feature-rich uh, survey tool in Drupal. Uh, one thing that really sets Webform apart from other systems is that it is actually designed for your end users, that is your content creators, people that uh, basically have no technical knowledge, uh, to enable them to be able to make a survey. Uh, rather than being an administrative based task, uh, web forms are definitely intended to be sort of like your front end users, or maybe not your front end users, your, your editors and your content creators. Those are the people that web form is geared towards. So it has a lot less technical depth really to it than, than a lot of other Drupal solutions out there. Um, uh, on that, so I say, I, I say pretty blatantly it's easier to use than field module or, or CCK. Uh, and no, it's, it's not based on entities or on fields uh, in Drupal 7. Um, there's some thoughts about uh, converting it to use fields, but that will basically mean the end of support for Drupal 6. Uh, right now, Drupal 6 still has more installations, at least, uh, of web form than Drupal 7, though it's, it's definitely coming to an intersection really soon. So maybe even web form 4, maybe that'll happen, but there's a lot of upsides and downsides to, to taking that approach. Uh, and web form is a many to few method of collecting data. Um, to demonstrate that, uh, and this is one of the reasons why web form is so much more different than, than field module, is that uh, you've got your front end users uh, and you've got your editors, your, your back-end administrators, and your front-end users, when you look at a web form node, like a piece of content, you actually see the form uh, as the front-end side of your site. And then your, your end users are making submissions over to your editors, uh, and your editors pretty much are the only people that are actually viewing those submissions. Not like field module where you're regularly producing uh, front-end content, uh, that is publicly accessible, you know, when you create a, a blog post or something like that. Uh, the blog post is available publicly on the front end of the site. Webform is intentionally geared to make it so that all of those submissions basically are only viewed by a very small group of people rather than being publicly available to everybody. Uh, one exception to that is that uh, an end user who has created their own uh, submissions, they are able to see the submissions that they themselves have submitted. So that's the only kind of front end user actually seeing any back end results typically is that an end user can see their own submissions and edit them. So let's do a quick walkthrough of uh, the web form interface. Uh, to get, actually just get a quick, uh, quick, uh, <laughs> quick survey I guess of the people in the room. Uh, how many people have used web form before? Okay, everybody. So I might need, um, almost everybody. I might need to zip through this bit a little bit. Uh, web form 3, uh, some people have been thrown off a little bit, uh, moving from, up from web form, web form 2, which was for Drupal 6. Uh, web form 3 is also for Drupal 6 and Drupal 7. They're feature equivalent, uh, which uh, is a different model than most uh, Drupal modules. Uh, and that if I add a new feature to web form 3, it's the same. Like Drupal 6 gets it, Drupal 7 gets it, and that'll continue until web form 4 comes out, basically, which will be Drupal 7 only and probably be ported to Drupal 8. So in web form 3, uh, every uh, piece of content that is a, a web form gets a new tab added to it. Uh, and this tab is just simply called web form. Uh, and this web form tab is where you're able to configure the actual form itself. Um, so 
With, uh, with Webform, it's not uncommon to have hundreds of nodes that are web forms uh, and hundreds of nodes that all have maybe dozens of fields on them, ending up with hundreds of fields on all of these different nodes. Um, and so it's a, it's a nice way to keep all these things organized that you don't need to end up with you know, 20 different content types. You just have one content type called web form, and each individual node has its own unique form that you can create. This particular example, uh, obviously, is a, a basic contact form. Um, in addition to setting up the actual form itself, uh, you can set up actions for receiving email. Uh, and there's a dedicated tab for that. And you can set up each e individual email configuration uh, that, will be sent, that will send an email when uh, a submission is made. Uh, and then there's the settings tab that includes a bunch of other uh, uh, fun settings, things like what message you want to show, uh, the user where you want to redirect them after they finish their submission, uh, limits, like how many limits you want to put on uh, how many submissions a, an individual user can make or how many submissions you want total, uh, and things like that. In addition to the web form tab, another tab is added that is the results, and the results are basically the collection of all of the submissions that you've gotten from the front end users. Uh, the first tab is just literally the list of all of the submissions that have come in, and you can view those one at a time. Uh, the analysis is a quick, uh, at a glance, sort of overview of how many submissions you've got, uh, who filled out which fields. If you've got a select list, it gives you a nice breakdown of which option in the, in the select list was submitted how many times. Uh, and the table view is basically all of the submissions and all of the fields all at once. So if you want to uh, if you're doing something like making a survey to uh, evaluate like a, a training or a session or something like that, um, rather than thumbing through all the individual responses, sometimes it's helpful just to look at all of the responses all at once, all on one screen. And it can make it so you can get a quick uh, overview of everything all at once. And then there's the download tab. And the download tab uh, has got some new abilities recently, which I'll be talking about. Uh, but the download tab basically lets you export those submissions that you, you've received into an Excel file or a CVS, uh, uh, CSV, excuse me, or, or tab separated value and import those things into Google Docs or whatever, whatever you would like to use those for so you can actually get some real good statistical analysis on, on those things. So uh, Webform 3 has uh, been out for a long time now, probably two years. Um, and by far more people are using Webform 3 than 2 now. Um, so these are kind of like the old features that I've, I've mentioned in presentations past uh, that still exist. Uh, and I'll just glaze over them. Uh, so you can Webform enable any content type now, rather than just Webform being the only content type. Um, so a common thing that people do is they will actually take the page content type and they'll Webform enable that content type also. And then they only create a Webform on, you know, maybe a couple of pages on the whole site, but rather than having a whole dedicated content type called web form, they just web form enable the page content type and have it so that their editors can just add a web form to any page on the whole site. Kind of an interesting take on things. Uh, or I've seen people that have six different kinds of web forms uh, that have those different kinds of web forms for permissions reasons. Um, Multi-page forms, web form uh, is by far the easiest way to make a, a multi-page form uh, in Drupal. And so that can handle back buttons and forward buttons and uh, making it so that users get moved between different pages. Uh, user editable email templates, every single email configuration that you set up, you can specify a template for that email. Uh, just through the UI, it's just a text area, so you can customize what that email is for every email that gets sent. Uh, end users, uh, this currently only works for, for logged in users. Hopefully in the future it'll work for logged out users too. Uh, but it, we have the ability to uh, save as a draft and resume, and also save automatically in between pages. So if you have a 20-page form that you think it's unlikely that people will ever actually complete, uh, you can do kind of like the telephone survey kind of method where you just keep asking people questions until they give up, you know, they hang up the phone. Uh, you, can save, you can save all of their progress all the way through. So if they stop halfway through, at least you got half of the information. Uh, and uh, total and per user submission limits. We added the ability to make it so that an individual user can only submit so many submissions total. Uh, and that's tracked by IP address uh, and cookie or if they're logged in by their user ID. Uh, and Webform is a 
super duper hackable module. Like it's got APIs like crazy um, that make it so that Webform has become a really popular module for other modules to extend. Uh, the base functionality is great, but Webform has over 100 extra add-on modules now that are out there that are all based on Webform. Uh, and you can, yeah, I've seen, seen all kinds of things, you know, Salesforce tracking or uh, rules integration is really great. Uh, so I've heard uh, integrations with panels and uh, all kinds of things. I mean, uh, if, if you've thought of using Webform in a particular situation, somebody's probably already written some kind of integration that does something similar. Um, but let's talk about new features. So these things are things that have been added really recently, uh, and I'm really excited about them. Uh, Webform really recently added HTML5 friendly field elements. So now we have these really great uh, field elements for, for email and number, for example. Uh, and on a mobile device, uh, the real advantage of this is that uh, this is a plain text field uh, on an iPhone. But if you're using an email field, you get a slightly different keyboard. Uh, if you look at those side by side, you can see that the email keyboard basically is dedicated purpose for typing an email. So it doesn't uppercase the first letter, for example, on an iPhone, uh, and it adds an at button and a dot button right there so that you can specifically type in that email address in a much more easy way. Uh, it also has some effect on desktop browsers. Uh, on any current version or recent version of Firefox or Chrome uh, and an Internet Explorer 10, uh, email fields have special browser built-in validation, so the user will actually get these warnings as they're typing in their email address or before they try to proceed to the next page. Uh, the browser itself, it, it looks like it's like a JavaScript-based uh, validation, but it's the browser-native validation of those, uh, those options. And so each browser treats it a little bit differently, but they all basically function the same way. Um, there's more info on that uh, on, on Quarks mode. There's this great link that basically tells you what the support is for different input fields for, for different browsers. Um, the nice thing is, is that as far as backward, backwards compatibility goes, uh, any browser that doesn't understand what a pound type equals email field is just falls back and treats it like a normal text field. So it's great that it's 100% backwards compatible all the way back to the earliest versions of Netscape or IE or whatever. Um, and that it'll just render like a normal text field for browsers that don't yet support HTML5. So still 100% uh, backwards compatibility support, but also moving forward to make Webform more mobile friendly. Let's see, we also added a new uh, number component real recently. Um, number components that can make it so that you can force users to input like uh, integers or decimals uh, and at certain levels or uh, steps as they're called. Uh, it's also an HTML5 element, which uh, in the land of desktop browsers doesn't do much other than add this little up-down uh, toggle on the desktop browser. Uh, and on a mobile browser, of course, you get a matching keyboard for, uh, for inputting numbers, which is also great. Um, this feature isn't new, but I always like to bring it up because it's something uh, not a lot of people realize exists in Webform, is that Webform has the ability to do conditional logic. Uh, where you can show a particular form or field or a particular field or an entire page actually based on the value of another field earlier in the form, uh, which we'll do that during our, our hands-on. Uh, the UI for this isn't, isn't great, but it's absolutely functional. Uh, and right now, conditional logic is limited to multiple page forms. So you can only do this if you ask a question on page one, uh, and then page two will adjust to the answers of page one. Unfortunately, like same page conditionals, um, there's a module that fixes that. It's called the Webform Conditional that adds same page conditional fields. Uh, but we'll be incorporating that into, into the core module itself uh, soon. Uh, let's see, download ranges uh, have got some new abilities. Uh, for people that get a whole bunch of submissions, like thousands or hundreds of thousands of submissions or even millions of submissions, all of those things have been done before. Uh, Webform now can selectively export only a, a subset of those, uh, which is great for people that regularly download uh, or export their Webform results into some other system. Uh, and it has a handy feature that actually remembers per user how many, uh, how many submissions you downloaded last time. So it will only download the new submission since the last time you downloaded the CSV file. So you can just add on those rather than needing to download the whole thing all over again. <coughs> 
uh, and this one, uh, this next feature is, is by far the most exciting thing to me. Uh, and during the demo, I'm sure you guys will, will find it exciting too. And that's the, the form builder integration for Webform is, is actually finally done and it, and it really works and it's stable, um, all of which has never happened before. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I had to give, uh, give some props to uh, Acquia. Um, they did the original porting of form builder for Drupal Gardens. Uh, so Drupal Gardens, if you've used it before, it also incorporates Webform as part of their platform but it has a completely different interface that they uh, submitted back to contrib the contrib space called Webform Alt UI. Um, web form, the form builder integration that comes with the, uh, the web form integration that comes with the form builder module doesn't depend on that module and it doesn't use some of the approaches, like they sort of oversimplified and removed a lot of functionality in that UI. Um, so that can't actually be the official way it works, but um, it was the basis for a lot of uh, this work that is finally stabilized uh, in Drupal 7. So um, since most people in this room are already familiar with Webform, I'm going to go over sort of like a little tips and tricks section um, that it, I'm hoping I'll be able to get at least a couple people going, oh, wow, I didn't know you could do that. So uh, Webforms are nodes, um, which has some disadvantages, like uh, the ability that they're not really exportable. Um, you can try using like features UUID and that will make nodes exportable. Um, but uh, Webforms being nodes actually gives Webforms a lot of advantages that we get right out, uh, right out of working with other modules really easily. And that's things like node clone, node export, scheduler, any access control module like OG or taxonomy access. All of these things work with any Webform that you create right away, which is really cool. So for example, uh, if you have node export module or the clone module enabled, uh, you get these new options here on your web forms. Uh, and this can be a handy trick to just set up if you have a lot of web forms that are regularly uh, very similar but not identical and you regularly create them, you can make an unpublished web form that you just come back to and you just clone that web form and all of the, uh, all of the components all get copied over to the new form and you can reuse that, that form really easily. It only copies the fields and the configuration and everything uh, over, so it won't copy over the submissions. So the submissions will always be blank when you clone, clone out a new node. And you can use node export. Node export makes it so that you can easily, uh, uh, if you want to set up a form on your local host or on a staging server or whatever, you can use node export, uh, which gives you a, a dump basically of the node, and you can take that over to your live site and hit import and import that web form onto that site or move a web form between different sites, which is kind of cool. Um, this one is uh, something that uh, has become really popular recently or more popular recently, but I don't think it's popular enough. Uh, and that's using the options element module. Uh, if, you're, if you've ever set up a select list uh, or radios or checkboxes, uh, you've been confronted with this extremely user unfriendly paradigm of saying, uh, just type in your options, one per line, and pipe separate the key versus the value, and your end users are all like, I'm gonna ask the developer to set this up, because I have no idea what, what is going on here. Um, and Webform actually forces you to do uh, a key, unlike the Drupal core module where uh, you can just type in a label, but that has some severe data integrity issues that if you have a, a typo in one of your labels and you come back and change that typo later, you've corrupted your data because now half of the stuff that's already in the database had the typo in it and half the stuff doesn't and things go really, really wrong. Um, so Webform forces you to have keys to avoid those data corruption issues. Um, but uh, yeah, using the value, you can just change, change that and that won't, that'll just change the, what's displayed, not what's actually been stored in the database. Um, the options element module gets rid of this UI um, and replaces it with something that is much more friendly um, and gives you individual fields, so uh, you can just hit the plus icon. I'll demonstrate this during our hands-on demo. Gives you a, a plus icon and a remove icon, uh, and for the most part, will automatically key all of your keys for you, starting at one and then counting upwards. Uh, so your end users, if they don't want to know what the keys are, they have no idea what, what the impl implications of that are, they don't need to worry about it. The keys are automatically added for them and hidden from them. If you want to, you can hit this customize keys option and you can still specify the manual keys that will get stored in the database. But most end users I found, once they don't have to think about keys, they, they don't. <laughs> so, 
Um, so trick three uh, is use hidden fields. Um, hidden fields are really awesome for storing information that only your administrators can see. Um, and particularly, it's really useful for tracking uh, if you've got a web form that is displayed in a block, uh, which is an option web form provides. Um, you can keep track of which page the user is currently on or what page the user is on when they filled out that form. So if you have something like a feedback form that is like report a bug on this page, for example, it's helpful to know which page they were on when they filled out the form. And you can do that by adding a hidden field that just includes the current URL of that page. Um, some people might be thinking, I, I thought this didn't work because it hasn't worked in a really long time. Um, that things like these server variables, which are server HTTP refer. HTTP refer is the page the user came from, if you want to keep track of where they were. Uh, and request URI, which is basically the current page that they're on right now. Um, these server variables didn't work up until really recently, uh, version 3.15 uh, of Webform added back this ability that has long been absent um, by introducing a new type of hidden. Like hidden used to literally be a hidden field on the, the HTML page. Now hidden fields are actually uh, what Drupal internally calls a value field. So they're never actually presented to the end user at all. They're not even printed out in the HTML page. Uh, which makes it so that we can securely access all of these special server tokens without the end user ever having access to those. And it also prevents all kinds of caching issues, uh, which is why, why uh, these server tokens were revoked for, for a little while there. So that's uh, a good thing to keep in mind. Uh, and then this one, uh, also relating to using tokens, uh, and that's using the get token. The get token is a really handy uh, token that can pull things out of the URL and set them as the value of a field. Uh, in this particular example, it's a text field, but using uh, the get token in combination with the hidden field is also a really great idea. And it makes it so that uh, you can construct URLs like this, like when you link to your form, you can say like uh, the referral code is this or your first name is this uh, and pull that value from the URL and insert it as the default value of the field, which is pretty cool. So that makes it so you can keep track of all kinds of things through the URL, uh, linking to the web form in different ways, and that will uh, be included in the submission that is actually passed forward to, uh, to your administrators. Let's see. And the last one uh, is use MindMail. MindMail and web form has some, have some really excellent integration with each other. Uh, that when you enable the MindMail module, you just get two new checkboxes on your emails. Uh, and that one of them is send as HTML, so you can choose whether or not you want a plain text email or an HTML based email. And that HTML based email will use my mail's theming to make it look like your site potentially, uh, or and you can use CSS and all kinds of great things in your emails. Uh, and also all of the files that are uploaded into that particular submission can be attached to the email and sent along to the recipient, which is really cool. So let's, uh, let's do some hands on stuff and I'll, I'll demo um, how to use web form and, uh, and some of these features that I just talked about. All right, so let's see. Let's start at the beginning here. Okay, so this is a basic web form here where I've got uh, just the core web form module installed uh, and I've set up a basic contact form. Uh, this is really common that people use web form and instead of the, the contact module to build uh, their contact form. There we go. Uh, to build their contact form. And like I said, uh, it's on, on the web form. It just has a new web form tab where you have all of your uh, components that you can set up. Uh, let's see. So let's add something like if we wanted to add uh, a component for uh, attachments with this message. So if you wanted to make it so that users could also uh, upload a file with their contact information, uh, you can say file and add. And I'll just leave it the default with all of the uh, just uploading images. Uh, and then we can go back to view. Uh, Webform recently uh, um, changed over, at least in Drupal 7, changed over its file handling. So it now uses the file module to do the AJAX-based uploading. And it supports a progress bar and private files and, and all of that great stuff. So private files are actually really, uh, really important in, in Webform if you want to keep, because Webform submissions are intended to be admin-only things. 
it's not a terrible idea to uh, make all of your file, let's see, uh, upload directory, oh, I haven't set up private files on this site, so, so they're not actually there. If, if I had set up private files, there's an option right in here that says, would you like this to be a private or public, um, publicly stored file? Uh, and Webform's integration with private files is now fantastic that it makes it so that the user who submitted the file can still see their file and the administrators who have access to, uh, who have access to view the submission or view all the results have access to the file but nobody else does. So, <coughs> all right, so on this particular form here, uh, okay, I've added an attachment. Uh, now I'm gonna go over here and set up some emails. Uh, on a normal email form, let's say if I want to, I've already got an email set up here that is just going to email to Nate at localhost, uh, so it's a hard-coded address, address. But you can also do something like set up an email that sends a receipt sort of back to the user saying, you know, we got your submission. Um, and so you can say, okay, send an email to the value of the your email field. So whatever they type in the your email field, you can send an email back to them. Uh, and I'll just leave uh, most of these, something like, uh, thank you for contacting us as being the subject, uh, the from name, that's all fine. Uh, and then because this is uh, going to be sent back to the user, they don't really need to see their, their same submission as before, but you might want to friendly this up a little bit saying, um, like we've received you know, make it a little bit more friendly and they may not have access to actually view their own submission, so you may want to remove that also. Uh, and just send a nice little little message to them instead of doing all the things from before. Um, Webform uh, currently uses uh, a, its own token system. Now that tokens are built into Drupal 7 and are way more performant, uh, we're moving forward to changing all of these tokens into Drupal normal tokens, but for now, we've still got these sort of proprietary web form tokens uh, that provide basic information that you can use in your templates. Uh, or you can choose which values you actually want included in this email values token. So we'll go ahead and save that. Uh, and then we'll go back to our form and send myself an email. So, um, And I'll leave this attachment empty for now. Well, actually, why not? Um, and send an email, uh, fill out the web form. Uh, this is the message that is set up to be displayed when the form is complete. And then I can go over and check my email. And I've actually gotten two emails here because I was the hard-coded administrator email and I was the person sending the email, so I got two. Uh, the first one here is I get the thank you for your contact request. So this is the one that was sent back to the user who filled out the form. And then I have a separate uh, submission here that is uh, with a different template that is sent to the administrator. Um, so pretty cool. You can set up as many emails like that as you want and send them to multiple people and do all kinds of great things. Uh, let's see. Oh, now uh, what I'd like to do is uh, go back and do that same thing over again, uh, but with my mail enabled. So I'm gonna turn on the my mail module. And my mail in Drupal 7 requires this mail system module. Uh, in Drupal 6, it works just the same though. It just doesn't have that dependency. Uh, and save that. And now when I go back, uh, if I fill out that form again. Oh, first, before I do anything, uh, I have to go over to my emails uh, and say, let's, let's say I want to configure the one that is sent to the administrator. Uh, these two new checkboxes appear, send as HTML uh, and include files as attachments. And that makes it so that I'll now get all of the files that are submitted uh, through the form, also straight into my inbox. So if I do that all over again and submit the same thing, uh, here come the emails. And you can see right there in my inbox that that file that was attached through the submission came right into my inbox, which is pretty cool. You can't tell too easily that this is HTML 
Uh, but versus this one, you can see that you know it's sort of more uh, generic versus this one. Uh, my mail has this great ability where you can just specify, I think it's a mail.css. If you throw mail.css in the root of your theme, uh, it'll just add that CSS file to all of the outgoing emails, which is really cool. So you can have a CSS file that targets specifically outgoing emails, uh, and you can make those, uh, those look as pretty as, as you like. And this is actually uh, like really pretty, pretty respectable markup that actually gets sent out here. This is actually, uh, let's see if I view the source of it here. Uh, uh, so my mail sends out all of the CSS for your actual site by default, which I don't necessarily agree with, but, um, and that's the actual image itself that is being sent in the email. But here we are. Like it actually has like uh, labels and form elements and, and all of that stuff. It's actually identical to the HTML that is produced on the website when you view the submission through the web interface. It just comes to, to your inbox. And of course, yeah, speaking of submissions, so those same sub submissions that I, uh, that I just made, uh, you can view them through the web interface. Uh, and this is what it typically looks like when you're uh, going through submissions that you've received uh, in web form. Okay, well, let's talk about, uh, let's see, conditional logic. I've got a second site set up here that is a multi-page web form that has some conditional logic in it. And so uh, web form has some, some nice things that uh, out of the box, it, it provides a, a very good experience for the number of fields and options and things that you have. Uh, web form, you don't need to install date module to get a date field, for example, or time module to get a time field. Uh, and it also has some, some interesting options like a grid, uh, a grid component that you can also use that provides a great Likert um, ability. And uh, they all just come with it out of the box. So this is a particular form that has three pages on it. Um, each one of these pages is uh, indicated by these, these dotted lines in the interface. Uh, and when I go uh, to the actual site itself, or to the form, Uh, this form is set up so that depending on the things that I check here on this uh, first page, the second page will ask me questions related to those first questions. So here we go. So I've got like uh, um, the main course is uh, a select list versus appetizers being a text field. Uh, and if I wanted to, I could uncheck appetizers and say, no, I'm bringing a dessert instead. Uh, and then go forward to the next page. And you can see that the appetizers field is now gone, but desserts is there. Uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, Webform also has this cool ability that um, not only uh, will it selectively show individual fields, but it's smart enough to look ahead to the next page and see if there are any fields left at all to display. And in the event that there's no fields at all left on that page, uh, then it will skip that page and go forward to the next one, which is pretty cool. Um, you also can use conditional stuff on an entire page break itself, the page break element that defines the next page. And that'll make it so you can skip entire pages all at once based on one single conditional rather than needing to conditional all of the fields inside of the entire page. So let's see. Let's check out how this is built. So uh, our individual page breaks here. These are the conditional fields here, the main course, appetizers, dessert, condiments, and other. Uh, and all of those are based on this field here for which course an individual is bringing. So this is using options element. So I've got options element installed on, on this site. Uh, and I'm using this customize keys option to make it so that I can specify the values that are going to be stored in the database. Um, so I've got main, appetizers, dessert, and other. And then when I actually configure any of these individual components, uh, down here at the bottom in this conditional rules field set is where the conditional is actually set up. So if the component course bringing, that's that select list I just looked at, uh, is one of the values main, so that's the key, not the value uh, here, uh, then this field will show, basically. And I, I, I still say, yes, this interface isn't great, but it, it functions. Um, it'll be better soon. Uh, oh, also a very interesting thing uh, on, this, uh, on this particular uh, option here for main course. Uh, if you install the select or other module, it provides the very nice ability for users to hit an other option. It just adds another tax on another option called other. Uh, and when we look at that from the front end, 
It makes it so that when they hit that, oh, that's not, not on this one, of course. Main course. So I am going to bring a main course, uh, and I'm going to bring something else, right? So this is selector other in action. It adds this little text field, uh, and I'm going to be providing some bacon to the barbecue. So can't wait, and then you can send this send this forward. And this this is a some debugging stuff in here. So and submit. There you go. And there's there's the submission coming through. Uh, and all of the conditional fields that get skipped uh, are, are intelligently not included in the results. So when I actually look at the results for this submission, you know, the fact that I'm bringing a main course is selected here, uh, and then the main course I'm bringing bacon, but it doesn't ask me about like the condiments or uh, accessories or desserts or whatever else, whatever options were there, they're all skipped over, which is pretty cool. All right, um, well now I've got uh, uh, my most exciting demo, which is uh, web form when enabled with the form builder module. So form builder is a project on drupal.org uh, and form builder includes the integration for web form in it. So you download form builder and it includes the web form integration that makes it all come together. And web form or form builder had some dependencies uh, in the Drupal 6 days, you had to install jQuery UI, which usually I mean you had to install jQuery update and all of this business of getting the right version stored, and it's a real pain. It's possible. It works perfectly fine for Drupal 6 if you get the right versions all lined up. Uh, but in Drupal 7, thank goodness, jQuery UI is just included in core, so you just install it and that's pretty much all it needs. It, it does depend on options element for making select lists. So, But uh, let's go to my, my interface here. So same thing as before, uh, web form tab and a results tab. The only difference here is that the web form tab is merely replaced. So all of the rest of the interface is identical. The only thing that has changed here is that this interface uh, for setting up the individual fields has changed into a drag and drop interface for configuring the form. So configuring an existing field is just as easy as clicking on it and the configuration appears down below. Um, and then you can do things like you can set a description on things, um, you know, set a description on things, and it Ajax updates up above as you set any particular values. You know, like these are always the examples that, that I use, even though they don't really make any sense on, on names. Uh, and as you edit any of these properties, it Ajax updates. It's doing a bunch of Ajax requests in the background, and Drupal is re-rendering that element and then passing it back up, which is really cool. Uh, and then adding or moving fields around, you know, it's all just drag and drop. Uh, if you want to add a, a new component, drag it in from the, the side. Um, it actually does some, uh, some great things. Let's see, where's a, a grid? I love grids. Um, they've got some great, they look great when you, uh, when you edit them. So things like, uh, you know, I want to say randomize the options and randomize the questions. You can actually see up there at the top, like as these questions are being added, That, uh, that they're all, uh, all up there. Of course, this doesn't really make any sense the way that this is actually, um, yeah, randomizing some of these things, so. Yeah, pretty cool. Uh, and actually saving it, you know, you just hit save, uh, and then you go to the front end of your site, and your form, there it is, right? It's pretty sweet. Um, and this integration is now complete to the point that it works with all of the stuff that Web Form Core itself works with. Um, there's other modules that add additional web form components, uh, and some things like select or other isn't entirely supported yet. Um, the option basically just doesn't exist to turn it on. Um, but I think all of those things will, will, be, will be fixed in time, but right now if you just use the web form base functionality, or if you use modules that don't affect the actual form itself, like uh, web form validation is a really popular module that lets you say, on this and in any individual field, run a regular expression on it or make sure that two values are the same. Like if you want to have email and confirm email, uh, web form validation can add options like that. Um, so it's, it's really pretty awesome and it's really, uh, it's really stable now. So it's great that uh, that, that option's available. All right, uh, let's go back to uh, the presentation here. I'll wrap up a little bit. So the to-do list, the coming soon features list, I do this every year and I'm sad to say that better view support has been on the to-do list for at least the last year. Uh, the view support is, is 
respectable in that you can actually make submission or views of submissions, just like you can make views of nodes. But you can't actually make views containing the data of an individual submission. So you can only say, what are the submissions for this node, or what are all of the submissions for this user? But you can't actually say you can't actually make a view that contains the data that the user submitted yet. Um, but that that patch is actually coming along really nicely. Um, We'll probably be able to make that happen soon. Drupal 7 style tokens, this patch is really, really close to being done. Uh, and in, that includes a crazy upgrade path that goes through and updates all of your existing sites so that all of the old tokens will convert to the new ones. Um, we just have some questions yet to be answered about how to deal with things like the get token, for example. Um, some of those things aren't common to Drupal, but web form specific. Uh, progress bar for multiple pages. This has also been on the long list of things to do. Um, right now, the common workaround is people just add a markup field. A markup field just lets you add any HTML you want. Add a markup field at the top of each one of their pages and say, you know, you're on page two of three, right, or whatever. Um, it's a pretty cheap workaround, but uh, we'll get, we'll get a, a native progress bar here soon. Uh, same page conditional fields, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, and real translation support. This actually is not on the to-do list. This is actually pretty much done, but it's waiting approval. So Webform now actually has real translation support, finally. Um, and it makes it so that all of the individual descriptions and individual options, like if you're on a select list or radio buttons, uh, as well as the labels themselves, anything that is possibly translatable, uh, Webform now exposes that publicly to other modules so that other modules can actually handle uh, translating of all of the, the web form options. So this sandbox project here is called web form localization that should receive approval soon. Uh, and web form localization makes it so that you can translate things in the two ways that you can translate by either doing uh, content translation where you have multiple nodes and syncing across them. It can do that approach or it can expose all of your strings to the IATN. Uh, strings module and make it so that you just have uh, the one standard interface for translating all of the rest of the strings in Drupal uh, just for web form. So it's really cool. Uh, and I've got one more thing uh, to talk about uh, and that's something that those in the know have already, have already heard and figured it out. Um, and that's that uh, web form, well we now have a logo which is kind of cool. <laughs> uh, web, form, web form has uh, as many installations today as Drupal itself did three years ago. Uh, which uh, makes it a really big project that is uh, need, it, it has a, a need to stand on its own and a need to get a proper amount of attention um, in order to continue its development. And so to do that, or to accomplish that goal, uh, we've launched a new site uh, called webform.com. Uh, and webform.com is webform as a, as a service. Uh, so it's a survey monkey or a woofoo. Uh, it is literally just web form uh, on a website. It's got some interesting backstory that I'd love to talk about. It's an organic group site, so you can have uh, um, permissions on it and subsites and things uh, where your users can collaborate together on their forms. Uh, but uh, it's, it's an excellent showcase site for web form. Uh, it includes all of the stuff that I've talked about today, the form builder integration, the HTML5. It's responsive, so it's very mobile friendly. Um, and all kinds of great functionality. And this site, I think, is going to be a huge thing for the development of Webform because it does a couple of things. It makes it so that uh, um, as, the, as the developer of the module, I have a, a real strong reason to actually uh, develop and continue adding new and exciting features that people are wanting. Right now, I, I basically use Webform as a contact form on my blog. And that's the extent of my personal use of Webform. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I know a lot of people used it for a lot more than that, uh, and I, I'm always uh, excited to, to expand and, and develop the module, but now with a site that utilizes the full capabilities of Webform, uh, we'll really be pushing the envelope to add more features and actually make it more feature competitive with a lot of paid hosting solutions out there. Uh, the, des the design, I have to say, I give a shout out to, to Atten for doing the design of uh, of webform.com and if you go to the, their booth they'll, they're using webform.com for their survey to win, I can't remember what it is, an iPad or a Kindle or what was it? Snowboard. A snowboard, yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, in collaboration with Lullabot, my, my, uh, um, my employer. So uh, webform.com, I'm really excited about uh, the launch of it. Uh, you can go there today, you can sign up. Uh, it's free. Right now, it will be a subscription-based service uh, since the purpose is to make it so that Webform itself is sustainable, that uh, to make it so that uh, 
the web form can get dedicated time and resources uh, to actually make it so that we can make web form into a really awesome project, more awesome than it is already. All right, well, that's, uh, that's it for my presentation. Um, questions? Uh, yeah, please come up to the mic. Uh, you might have already addressed this, and I don't know, but we have the need to do a survey of questions that's like a quiz, and there's a right answer and a wrong answer to the quiz, and then we would like to compute a percentage of correct answers, and then icing on the cake would be if they get a passing grade, then we have conditional action we take, and if they get a failing grade, we have conditional action that we take. Is that all possible now? Yeah, so can WebForm be used as a quiz tool, basically? I, I get that question pretty regularly. Um, and WebForm itself, I don't feel like that's, that's functionality mm -hmm. that should live in the core module itself. And it could be written like a WebForm quiz module, for example. I still haven't seen it, though, unfortunately. Um, it's well within the abilities of the, the project itself to support quizzes um, through a module that basically all that you really need is something that says, what's the right answer, right? You could even do something like um, use the default value as the right answer, and that just never gets shown, and then you wouldn't even need any UI improvements at all. Um, so that would be a, a clever way of handling it, but I've never seen it actually implemented. So well within the realm of possibility, but not, not a feature that no, exists in, as far as I know. Um, hi, I was wondering if there's an easy way to put a time delay on the autoresponder or if that would be hard to build because we had a uh, client request, can we make it seem more like the autoresponder comes from a human <laughs> rather uh, than a machine and uh, a human cannot write an email instantly. So. Yeah, WebForm uh, um, does have some nice abilities already where uh, a built-in feature is mm -hmm. underneath the, uh, the form results. Uh, let me go back to uh, to the one where I was setting up a whole bunch of emails. Under the form results, there's this nice section or a nice option here. When you're viewing a submission, there's this link up here. If you have print module enabled, this also enables print and PDF versions of individual submissions, which is interesting. But out of the box, the only action for this uh, individual submission is to resend the emails. And so resend the emails, when you click on that, it will resend, well, you can choose uh, which people you want to resend the emails to, and it will resend those, those emails. What you could do is um, prevent Drupal from sending the email initially, uh, and then use the API to fire that function or that form on cron jobs. Uh, I can't, there, there's no built-in functionality for it, but it's just a smidgen from actually being there. So all of the infrastructure is there in place, but um, I haven't seen a module that does that right off the bat. Like a, it could be like web form email delay module or something like that. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. Hey, great presentation today. Um, quick question. I'm, I'm often struggling with like whether to build something with web form or to build it as a content type with, with fields. Um, you know, uh, it's much easier to design a, a web form even before uh, forms build integration and especially for end users. Um, but it seems like sometimes I can do more things with the results if it were a node, uh, but I like it. Do you have any comment or thoughts on that? Yeah, and one thing is is that I'd like to make it so that WebForm doesn't have those limitations, first of all. Um, so I think adequate view support uh, for submitted data would really go a long ways to removing that, that obstacle of it being more difficult to work with. Um, but uh, um, really when it comes down to it, on the, the project page itself, I sort of give you, give the breakdown of basically that uh, uh, if you are creating a lot of forms and they're regularly changing or you're scheduling them to only be active for certain times, WebForm is the definite right solution there. If it's a central part of your site that you set up and never ever change, uh, say like a single donation form or a, the contact page, for example, um, it gets a little bit murky as to what's the right solution there. Uh, yeah, the, I mean, they, they've got some different abilities, and if, if WebForm has an ability that you you want that nodes don't, it's it's a good way to go. But yeah, yeah I mean, they, it's even, you, even like things like um, you know, building queues or workflows or process flows around the submission results. Uh, you know, I I, I don't want to just you know see it's there. I want to assign you know 
I can't think of a great example off the top of my head, but you know, stuff stuff like that. You know, it's like I want just a little bit more, and a view, a view is definitely uh, right step in the right direction. But you know, I yep. want to mark it as like I've responded to it or I've read it. Yep. You know. Yeah, and actually, the ability to mark something as responded is um, oh. something that is uh, high on my to-do list actually, because after looking at some competing products, there's an excellent uh, WordPress module that does that, that that does forms, and they have the mark as read and star functionality, essentially identical to Gmail. And I was thinking, gee, that sure would be great if this uh, listing of submissions here actually had like a checkbox along the side that said Marcus Red or Star or whatever. Um, but what you can do in the meantime is that uh, uh, Webform has the ability on any individual component, uh, if you want to say something, if you want to add a, a checkbox for Red or something like that, there's this new option down here called Private, uh, which I really should re really label to Admin admin visible only or something like that, which makes it so the end user doesn't see that, but administrators, when they view or edit the submission, do. So it makes it so you can do something like you can say this thing has been handled or you can put it into a different workflow state uh, or whatever based on, uh, on private components. So yeah, uh, I, uh, my goal is to make WebForm do everything you want. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Nate, a great job on the web form, and good luck with uh, webform.com. Um, I'm building a contact us page, and one of the options that I want to put there is uh, the ability for visitors to contact different departments uh, of our company. So uh, what I want to do is, depending on which uh, option they select from the drop-down list, uh, an email will be generated to that department. Mm -hmm. What would be the best way to implement something like that, uh, where uh, the email is generated based on the option that is selected. Right, yeah, that Webform has had that ability for, for ages, but its implementation has always been really bad. Um, mm -hmm. That's uh, in Webform right now, you can set up an individual email. When you configure an email, you can set it up to be a component value like this, and it shows you all email v fields here. It also shows you all select lists. So if you set up a select list that has the key of, of an, a user's email address, and you say that that is like the support department, then when they select support, it'll email to that select list key, which is their, their email address. This is a bad thing, though, because it's literally meaning that in your database, you're storing people's email addresses as the values to submit a data. And it also means that if you view the source of the page, you can see people's email addresses. So lots of bad things happening there. Um, Yeah, yeah. So there, there are other solutions, though. Um, long term is that the conditional support is going to be also added onto these email uh, email configurations. So each email configuration will uh, be have conditional actions, just like individual components do. Uh, but in the short term, the best solution I found is to say you might look at Webform Rules module rules. Uh, because Webform Rules module makes it so that you can do all kinds of crazy stuff based on a submission, including sending emails. So it would supersede the web form built-in interface for, for adding emails. Got it. Thank you. Hi, I love web form. Um, I'm not sure if this is more of a conditional question, because it is, I'm asking about a conditional. We have a worldwide distributor submitting sales records, and the Japanese distributor needs three extra fields that none of the rest of the world needs, and we would love to hide those. So just be able to use a token to say, if this registered user or authenticated user is logged in, these three fields show up. Is that going to be more web form conditional, or can I use that? Hmm. I haven't seen the token available for who is signed in, and we right. want it based on who's signed in. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's. I like. I like where your thoughts are going. Um, yeah. You can use web form in all kinds of crazy ways, and that would be a really clever usage um, to have a, a hidden field essentially, and you can use a hidden field as the subject of a conditional. You say that they're logged in users. They're logged in. Our, the entire site's authenticated. If they're, if they're logged in users, you could set up a hidden field um, that actually contains something like a, uh, you could set up a hidden field that had a default value that is a property on that individual user. Um, okay. Actually, even what you could do is you could say, uh, even, even in, in web form today, I, I don't like our, our user tokens, but you definitely could do this, where you could say, Take the user's user ID and set mm -hmm. that as the default value of a hidden field. Okay. And then you can use uh, uh, conditional to say conditional. if user ID is greater than zero, or if you could you could look at a particular role or whatever um, to make it so that you could say you know only show this field if some condition is met about the user. 
Okay, and just a tip, if other people need this, I used the hidden field when we had our sales records and they were gonna order a stamp, because these people are older than that department, uh -huh. to put the routing. I entered the license, I did that, and I used a hidden field and just did plain text and put their little stamp data on the hidden field so the administrators could see that and not have to order a stamp. Yeah, and they yep. change it as they need it. <laughs> yep, yep. And now actually uh, with the private or with the private components, that's a, a really common way to do that too now. So you could do like a private select list or check boxes. So rather than having a plain text field like they may have right now, you could actually have like a checkbox saying, yes, this is approved or something like that. that yep, yep. Yeah, with uh, now any, any individual component, you can say, um, this component is private. So private means if you can view the administ if you have access to this tab, to the results tab, then you can see a private field. Yeah, yeah. Can you describe the uh, interaction with the back end uh, when a user is inputting into a multi-page form? So are the results saved for each page in the back end or is it all happening in the browser with Ajax and you know, hiding pages selectively, how does that work? Yeah, okay, so how do, how do multi-page forms work on a, on a technical standpoint? Well, uh, no matter what, uh, with a web form, after every individual page, if you've got a multi-page form, the status of what the user has submitted uh, is stored in the form cache database table, or if you're using memcache or some other system, then in whatever caching system you're using. Uh, and in between there, that's where it lives. Uh, it doesn't get saved into the database in a way that is permanent at all unless you enable uh, like an option like this, automatically save as draft between pages. And that makes it so that after every individual page, it's saving to the database in a permanent administrator available accessible location. If it's just in the form cache table, if they don't complete the form, it disappears, uh, basically. But uh, yeah, it's stored in a temporary location up until the point that they actually submit it, unless you're using this option. Um. You mentioned uh, donations. It just any inter interaction with like a, a gateway like authorize.net to make it a secure form for a donation or something? Yeah, geez. I, I'm betting you're on Drupal 7, right? Or 6. Oh, hey, lucky you. Uh, <laughs> uh, I wrote this module called Webform Pay. Uh, and Webform Pay uh, integrates with the pay module that integrates with authorize.net and Payflow Pro and PayPal and all of these different things. Uh, and you can see from the screenshot here. Uh, it basically just adds a web form component called pay. Uh, and so you can add a web form component that can take credit cards or, uh, or whatever. Uh, it's unfortunately kind of languished a little bit because uh, the pay module itself never hasn't been updated for Drupal 7, at least in a way that's supported, which has made it so that I've really tapered off any interest in this module. If, it, if pay module isn't, isn't supported, there's no point in maintaining web form pay. So, uh, for now, though, uh, Drupal 6, we use this on, on a lot of our sites to accept donations. So um, that's an option. That's pretty stable. Yep, and stable. Thank you. Uh, one thing I found interesting with, with the ability to go in and uh, download your CSV or tab files you know, from the last mm -hmm. time, is, is that something that you could set up uh, like to email those to let's say your administrator, whoever, but like you know, email those interim results uh, every two days or something. As, as a CSV file or an Excel file or yeah, like an attachment to the email as a CSV. Yeah. Okay. So the uh, the short answer is not without custom coding right now. Uh, fortunately, though, um, that will not be the case very soon. Actually. Uh, um, there's an excellent patch in the queue that adds Drush integration with Webform, uh, which would make it so that you can export results through Drush, uh, which would be pretty, pretty freaking cool. Um, and that, using that, you could set up a cron job or a Jenkins job and use Drush to export only new submissions uh, and then pipe that to a mail command and then you could then, you know, export stuff onto a temporary file of, uh, or into a temporary location and email somebody all through uh, a cron job. So. That's good. Something to look forward to. <laughs> Hi. Um, I'm wondering if, if there is a, a possibility to send an email to a multiple, uh, to a role? To a role? Yeah. All, all the users of a role? Yeah. Or a multiple users. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think I'm going to have to punt that one to rules. Um, so you, you could use Webform Rules module 
um, which can do pretty much anything you can think of with any arbitrary stuff that Drupal provides. <laughs> so on, upon a submission, since you can send an email uh, and you can choose the recipients of those email as being uh, all, of the, all of the members of a particular role, as far as I know, um, roles can do yeah, crazy stuff, so. Thank you. All right, and this is probably the last question, and then uh, and then we'll at least call it good. But I can I can talk after the presentation. So <laughs> lucky for me. Um, so from the data that comes from a web form, uh, other than exporting it, is there a way to route it to a system for further processing, like say a CRM or something like that? Uh, an external CRM or Salesforce or yeah, Salesforce, let's say, or anything. I mean, is there how do people Kind of how do people their forms yeah the data into I, I've, I've seen web form integrations with just about every CRM that I've ever heard of um, most of those uh, implementations though are really uh, really pretty simple or actually some of them the the are kind of hacked up jobs too but uh, um, the basic idea uh, of any module that provides a CRM integration is that Drupal or web forms there's nothing special about this form that Webform has created. It is Drupal Forms API, which means that you can Drupal form alter that just like any other form in Drupal. Uh, and the officially sanctioned way of, uh, of adding additional actions is simply to form alter the submit handler. So you add another submit handler onto it that usually would do a Drupal HTTP request and shove that information over to Salesforce. So add a submit handler, use Drupal HTTP request to send that external data somewhere else. Got it. That's good enough. All right, well good, well thank you very much for coming. Oh, uh, and uh, please also fill out the survey uh, saying how you thought of it. I shortened up a URL for you um, that goes to webform.com, just kidding. Goes, goes to DrupalCon Denver um, that for, uh, for rating this, this presentation. <laughs>